Hello and welcome to another video from my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I talk about a selected story from the Star Trek franchise. A few minutes ago I finished watching the next episode of Star Trek Discovery called Leafy, at least I think that's how it's pronounced. So of course here are my opinions about it for those of you who are interested in it. First of all, a huge apology. Yesterday I was working on a video about the classic Star Trek episode uh, The Doomsday Machine. While it was encoding, uh, we had a power outage. After the power was restored, I was extremely happy to find out that I didn't save basically anything, uh, not the video project, not the text file, so I basically have to start from scratch. So yes, the video will come. I just don't know when. I really hope I will be able to do it tomorrow, but I can't give you any promises, but it will be done. Uh, second, did you hear the news today? CBS has officially announced that Star Trek Discovery will get a second season, probably 2019. They have now officially confirmed it. So it looks like enough people are interested in it. I'm not sure what to think about it, but I'll definitely be watching it. Uh, but now to this episode. Let's start with the crap. It's always uh, more fun to tell crap. Uh, there were many, many, many really stupid things in this episode. I'll talk about the things I personally thought were, uh, for a lack of a better word, insulting. First, Vulcan has a blue sky. Anybody, and I mean anybody who knows Star Trek, knows that Vulcan's sky is red and that Vulcan has no moon. They made exactly the same error in the J.J. Abrams movies, and guess who was working on those? Yes, Alex Kurtzman, one of the executive producers of Discovery. I must give them one plus point, they have done something which looks like um, red clouds or something, so maybe they know they've done crap and tried to somehow mask it, I don't really know. The second thing, Ash Tyler, we meet the guy in the previous episode and suddenly he and Captain Lorca behave like they're lovers or best friends or something. Uh, but it's very strange to be honest and I don't know if uh, this is an example of bad writing or if it is a preparation for something which will be shown in the future. If it has something to do with uh, the captain being tortured in the previous episode. Uh, guess what the discovery has and should not have? Well, there are many possibilities, but I am talking about the holodeck. So, the Discovery has a holodeck in the 23rd century, but in the 24th century on the Enterprise D it will be a complete novelty. Bravo guys, continuity, what's that, right? And yes, I know that something similar to a holodeck was on the animated series in one episode, but as far as I know that's officially still not canon, or is it? Cadet Tilly and Michael are running on the ship and talking, and in the beginning of their running, Tilly has no problem with briefing. It's almost like they started to run a second before the take started. I mean, seriously, these are mistakes which amateurs do. This is something what YouTubers don't do anymore, but it's okay in a multi-million dollar production. That is kind of sad. And we have the Force again, let's call it what it is. I was hoping they will cut the crap out, but no, they use it again. Michael and Sarek are linked, and by the way, I am pretty sure that his name is pronounced Sarek and not Serek. Is there nobody who actually watched Star Trek? I think it's kind of sick, especially after they claim that all of them are huge Star Trek fans. Sarek here is not a Vulcan, he is basically a Jedi. In every scene he was in, I kind of expected him to pull out his lightsaber. Now, uh, what was wrong with Stamets? Was he on drugs? Because it looked more like uh, the actor himself was on drugs. I mean, the guy seems to be a very bad actor, I haven't seen him in anything else. And 
this comes from a guy with a monotone voice, but what was he doing in this episode was just weird. It was like watching a drunk person pretending to be sober and at the same time trying to use his keys to open an imaginary door. I have no clue if this was intentional, but it was stupid, so it's on this list. The last stupid thing, I swear, I mean there were more of them, but I want these videos to be short. Just two words, logic extremists. How can anybody say it with a straight face? Logic extremists. So, there are apparently logic extremists on Vulcan and they probably think it's logical to kill children. But that's me going into spoiler territory, which I don't want to do in this first impression videos. After this beginning, you might think I actually hated this episode, but you know what's funny? I genuinely think that this was the best episode so far. I actually enjoyed it. It was uh, all character driven, and for the very first time uh, they actually were characters. For the very first time I felt like I'm watching a starship full of people and not a bunch of complete assholes. I actually liked Michael Burnham for the very first time, finally in episode 6, and oh my god she actually can smile and stop pretending she has a ruler stuck up in her butt. What a pleasant surprise, for the very first time she felt like a human being. Even Captain Lorca was likeable, which uh, was pretty weird, and I'm glad they finally touched on his mental state and that they actually know about it and plan to do something about it. Until this day I just couldn't understand how such a horrible person could become a captain of a Federation starship. By the way, they acknowledge that the Enterprise is flying somewhere in space, so glad they, they didn't mention the captain. One annoying thing, uh, the last episode ended with Stamets uh, looking at the mirror, then he left, but his reflection stayed in the mirror and smiled. They didn't address it at all in this episode, I feel a bit cheated. But overall, if you can forget all the bits which are insulting to every fan of the classic Star Trek series, it is actually a pretty well written episode. Uh, well, probably it has something to do with the fact that one of the writers is Joe Minoski, a writer behind such masterpieces as Darmok from The Next Generation. Hey producers, maybe you should give him to write the whole show? He obviously knows how to write characters, just saying. And for those of you who want to hear some numerical score, uh, I would give this episode on my scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage and 10 is a masterpiece, I would give it 6 out of 10. I really did enjoy it, but it had way too many stupid things in the script. Way too many. But I must admit, this episode was a very pleasant surprise for me. At this point in time, I wasn't expecting anything good from the show, and I got something above average. Keep it up and let's hope that the second season will be actually good. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I will find the time to do my Doomsday Machine video soon. See you next time. Bye.